Daryl Waltrip. You know his voice. Oh, I won the Daytona 500. I won the Daytona 500. Here's the deal. When I got up this morning, they put the basco all over my eggs. And man, I, this red flag couldn't have come at a better time. I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> know his moves. Him dancing after winning that Daytona 500. Him winning races, 84 of them, and championships, three of those. You know his nickname, Jaws. But do you really know Daryl Walter? Let me tell you what you kids don't know about old DW. First off, just how did he get that nickname? A Kale Yarborough quip after one of their tangles turned Dale Waltrip into Jaws. Calling him Jaws in frustration, Yarborough's comments were seized upon by legendary track promoter Humpy Wheeler. With Wheeler displaying a shark at the track about a month after the comment, Waltrip was forever known as Jaws. And it fit, because while he could make a big splash and be ruthless, he also was often smooth as a driver, and he was methodical when deciding when to strike. Daryl Waltrip, for all the show, for all the mouth, sometimes wasn't all that quick to take a bite. Now, he wasn't the most patient driver in the world, but when you think of the great ones, he certainly was more Jimmy Johnson than Dale Earnhardt. I think DW was just maybe underrated as a driver, just a smart driver. You know, he was the guy that was always making it seem like the right decisions, and he was around at the end, and you know, it wasn't necessarily the most flashy driver on the track, um, but he would get it done at the end of the race. And then, of course, when he got out, he was flashy <laughs> out of the car. The durability of our race cars, the engines and the components, they were not that great. And DW knew you needed to take care of your equipment and you needed to be there at the end. And yeah, DW, he ruffled a few feathers along the way. There is no question, but I think everybody knew that DW would race you hard but he had no problem being raced hard as well. Where did Waltrip learn that? At the Nashville Fairgrounds. At the time, the track was a high bank short track, a little like Bristol Motor Speedway. It was the prime place to prepare for a career at the highest level of stock car racing. Waltrip always had a knack of being able to go fast. He owned his own cars when he first entered cup racing and in his first full cup season, where else did he win but Nashville? And he followed that Nashville win up later in the year with a win at Richmond. By the time of that Richmond win, Waltrip was already driving for someone else. He was driving for car owner Bill Gardner. They ran well but inconsistent, and after Waltrip once failed to make a race, he purchased a ride from another team. Typically when that happens, the driver just hopes to eke out a decent finish. Waltrip hopped into the car they bought, and he finished fourth at Michigan. Waltrip really just needed a race for someone else, and he had to pay $300,000 to get out of his contract to go drive for Junior Johnson. Yes, that Junior Johnson, the driver Waltrip used to listen to on the radio as a kid. Waltrip had won 27 races for Gardner, but never won a championship. That would change almost immediately when he started driving for Junior Johnson. What was the difference? Daryl didn't listen to a lot of people and take advice from a lot of people, but he respected Junior Johnson. And Junior Johnson took Daryl from being a contender and a winner to being a champion. Uh, Junior was set in his ways, Darrell was set in his ways, but somehow they worked together, found common ground, and they were hard to beat. Hard to beat is an understatement. Waltrip won 12 times in a championship in his first year with Junior Johnson. The next season, he won 12 more times in another title. Over five years, they won 30 races and three championships. And then Waltrip was on the move again, this time to up-and-coming car owner, Rick Hendrick. He won nine races over several years with Hendrick before getting that itch for <laughs> cockiness to do his own thing. While he would win five races in his own equipment, he would never come close to the glory he enjoyed with Junior Johnson. Uh, DW just had that swagger and that style about him, uh, whether it was the Gatorade car, Budweiser car, uh, you know, even towards the end of his career with that Western Auto sponsorship and that ownership. Uh, he just always had that charisma about him, and it was like his nickname was Jaws, right? And he, you never know what was going to come out of his mouth, but he knew how to play the game. He especially knew how to run the short tracks. 
He won seven consecutive races, seven at Bristol Motor Speedway. That high bank track time in Nashville allowed him to own that Bristol track, where he won 12 races overall in his career. He had 11 at the short track of Martinsville, 10 at the short track of North Wilkesboro, and eight more at Nashville, where NASCAR stopped racing after the 1984 season. I think the biggest thing that made Darrell so good is he realized that in a 500 mile race, you can't win it in the first two or 300 miles, but you can flat lose it if you get in trouble. And I don't know how many races, especially when you look at all the races that he won at Martinsville, that he won at Bristol, the short tracks like North Wilkesboro and Richmond, he didn't really show up until it was time to show up. I'd agree with that. Uh, he was very calculated and seemed to protect his car better than a lot of other guys and you know, came away without any scratches. And you know, to win Bristol, 12 times? That doesn't just happen by chance. But don't just think he was a short track ace. He won four times at Darlington, arguably the most difficult track on the circuit. He could get it done on the big tracks too. He won four times at Pocono, four times at Talladega. And he won once at Daytona. But boy, was it a biggie. He didn't have the best car, but some fuel strategy put him in position to win the 1989 Daytona 500. It was one for the memory books, if not for the way it was done, but the celebration that followed. This is the Daytona 500, isn't it? <laughs> you bet Don't it tell is. me it isn't. Yes, Walter had won a Daytona 500. It came more than a decade before he retired from full-time racing to embark on a 20-year broadcasting career with Fox. His last several years on the track, man, they were somewhat painful to see Waltrip struggle. And many fans who began following the sport in the 1990s, they never saw his greatness, except for a short period of time. When Dale Earnhardt needed a substitute for the injured Steve Park in 1998, Daryl Waltrip finished fifth at Fontana and sixth at Pocono. There was still a lot of fast racer in old DW. There was a fast racer left when he retired. Maybe we just didn't see it. It's something that you kids don't know. In the first year of Michael Waltrip racing as a cup team, they were testing at a short track. Ricky Michael McDowell remembers old DW getting the itch to show him how to get it done. There's a high bank short track and he was like, I want to drive it. He got in and, and was ripping. It was a shock to me, I mean, because I don't know how long it had been since he had drove, but he got in and he was like, he was fast. So uh, that was cool to see. Maybe no one should have been surprised that Daryl Waltrip, tied for fourth on the all-time win list, could still go fast, especially at a short track. You might know him more as a broadcaster, and Daryl Waltrip certainly wasn't shy about telling it like he saw it, just like he wasn't shy after a race to run his mouth. But here's the thing, he could back it up. With a nickname like Jaws, maybe you better or you won't have a long career. Daryl Waltrip, he had a long career, and it seems appropriate to end this piece with something that, well, you kids do know. You know how we're gonna start this race, right? Boogity, boogity, boogity. When I wave the green flag, I wanna hear boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys, you with me? You with me? All right, give me that green flag starter. Hey, race fans, thanks for watching our video. For all NASCAR on Fox News content and the best clips from Fox Sports, be sure to follow and subscribe to our channel.